I still have Parkinson's disease. My specialist told me I always will. But I don't suffer from the illness anymore. And that's the difference. Despite everything medical that was going wrong for me then, my life is now back to normal. Actually, a little better than normal. I'm one of thousands who have transformed their health, but I still feel blessed. Let me tell you how this turnaround happened. A shock diagnosis. I'd first gone to my doctor with concerns about, of all things, my balance. My muscles had been feeling increasingly stiff. and I'd been feeling unsteady on my feet for a long time. When a friend noticed a slight shaking in my left arm, I knew I had to see someone about it. It took a number of mental and physical tests for specialists to confirm the worst. But once it was confirmed, I went into a state of absolute shock. The specialist spelt out the long-term possibilities for me. But however much of a positive spin he tried to put on the diagnosis, it all ended in the same place. Therapies, drugs, specialist care, and the never-ending falling apart that comes with a degenerative brain disease. I was on a downward slope to goodness knows what. Of course, now that I'm off that downward slope, I feel very different about things. But I admit that I went into a miserable slump. I really didn't take in much of what they were telling me. All I could see was a person old before their time, having to rely on others to help me perform even my most personal functions. I had never thought about my life ending up like that. For weeks, I was just too upset to think or do anything. An overnight change. Then one morning, I woke up and I felt completely different about it. I was angry instead. I was filled with a sense of injustice. Why me? How did I come to deserve this? I was furious. I started to research Parkinson's disease like a person possessed and quickly discovered there's a lot of information out there. Too much, in fact. Some of it quite complex. Some of it frustratingly contradictory. And some of it is just plain wrong. After three weeks of searching, I stumbled, quite by accident, on something that was the turning point in my struggle with the disease. In fact, what I found out turned my health and my life completely around. I'm going to tell you now what made the difference. And it's all based on why we get this horrible condition in the first place. Why do we get this illness? Parkinson's disease is a degenerative brain illness. Why does our brain health start to degenerate? It degenerates due to a loss of nerve cells in a part of the brain called the substantia nigra. These nerve cells in the substantia nigra manufacture a neurotransmitter called dopamine. But as the nerve cells die off, less dopamine is created. We need dopamine. The loss of dopamine leads to the loss of body control and leads to a whole cascade of other physical and mental symptoms that combine to steadily ruin a person's life. There's a simple, well-understood trail from good health to Parkinson's. Nerve cells dying off in the substantia nigra lead to reduced dopamine production, which leads to Parkinson's disease. However, almost all modern-day medical treatments start at step two, reduced dopamine. We're trying to increase dopamine, which sounds sensible at first. But the problem is that we're tackling a disease that has already started, and we're not addressing it at the point of its underlying cause. It's like being in a sinking boat and constantly bailing out the water instead of fixing the leak. We can bail for so long, and then we sink. The reason why most people eventually get so ill with this condition is because almost no treatments tackle step one, the dying of the substantia nigra cells. Yet, doesn't it make sense to address the initial cause of this dreadful condition? Of course it does. I've learned a lot about this disease. And here's the main thing I learned, and then proved to myself. We have choices about how this condition plays out. In fact, medical scientists have proved that many people with the genetic disposition to this never get it, while others with no genetic disposition at all still get full-on Parkinson's that ravages their mental health quickly and remorselessly. It's not genetics. It's a basic illness with recognized causes. Remember, the substantia nigra produces dopamine. It's the loss of substantia nigra nerve cells that leads to the loss of dopamine. And that loss of dopamine leads to Parkinson's disease. So the big question is, why on earth is the substantia nigra losing those dopamine-producing cells in the first place? I was shocked to discover that we already know why we're losing those priceless, life-giving substantia nigra cells, yet still do almost nothing about it. And now I know why we don't. There are eight main factors leading to Parkinson's. Some have a small effect, 
A couple are huge. Together, they're essential in beating this horrible condition. In truth, some of them my healthcare center already acted on. For example, they prescribed dopamine-enhancing drugs. For sure, I needed more dopamine. I had tests and underwent occupational therapy. Again, good stuff. It helped me manage my problems with balance, movement, stiffness. But I also realized they were not helping me to avoid the worst symptoms of this disease. At best, they were just delaying it. Yet that's what I wanted most, to not end up with my own personal Parkinson's horror story. Which is why I went headlong into my own research about my illness, and eventually found my way out. I'm not a medical rebel. Now, I should point out that I am not the kind of person who second-guesses his doctor. I trust professionals and experts. They studied for years. They do the research. They know plenty. But their most effective meds came with unpleasant side effects. And those meds would become less effective as time wore on. They would work for a while, and then they'd start failing. As they failed, my health would fail even more. What kind of future is that? I wanted better than this. Although I was getting worse very slowly, I was still noticing it. That shaking of the hands was very real. Slowness in my movements had gradually become more noticeable, and I was developing other classic symptoms, sleep problems, low moods and anxiety. My sense of smell started to weaken. Failure to recall how I'd spent yesterday, complete loss of recall about my own wedding, recognizing faces but not remembering names. We joke about these things and put them down to age. But when there's a diagnosed condition that is actively robbing you of physical and mental abilities, that's no joke at all. I knew this condition led to physical disability. I also knew it led to mental disability. I was scared, to be honest. Scared to be a burden. Scared to lose my ability to control my own body. Scared to watch my life deteriorating before my eyes. Thankfully, none of this is going to happen which is what I want to tell you about now. So let me start by reassuring you of this. I feel fine, absolutely fine. In some ways, I'm happier and more positive than I was before I got that initial shocking diagnosis. My hands no longer shake. I sleep like a lamb, and I recall all the important details about my life or what I did this morning with ease. Second, there is a reason I feel this way and it's to do with how I've actively worked on my condition. I feel wonderful, and there's a reason why. Actually, there are three fantastic reasons. First and foremost, I have tackled the loss of dopamine by working on the underlying cause of that loss. We know that cell loss in the substantia nigra is the direct cause of dopamine loss. I address that cell loss in gentle but powerful ways, and so protect dopamine levels. Second, I increase dopamine production in my brain using non-drug methods. Increasing dopamine fights this condition head-on, leading to wonderfully quick improvements. Third, I have taken each of the symptoms of my illness, stiffness, shaking, anxiety, and so on, and addressed them directly. I have enacted specific daily habits that make those symptoms reduce to almost nothing. The disease doesn't stand a chance. Because this is an illness that could be tackled on so many fronts, doing what I did meant my overall health actually got better over time. The three steps I described provide health benefits that overwhelm the downside of the disease. You deteriorate one part because of the illness, but improve three parts because of these new, powerful daily habits. More than anything, what I learned is that Parkinson's is not the terrifying, life-destroying diagnosis that so many of us believe it to be. I was able to choose what this illness did to me, and I chose for it to do nothing to me. The key insight. By addressing cell degeneration directly, tackling low dopamine production naturally, and resolving the actual day-to-day -day effects of the condition, this three-point approach turns out to be absolutely transformative. Now, I realize how puzzling it might seem to hear this for the first time. The nagging question for me was always, why don't health professionals do what I did to resolve my illness? It was easy to do, quickly effective, it didn't cost me a penny in medical bills. I found out the surprising truth by actually asking a doctor. We get ill in stages. There are five stages of Parkinson's disease. Typically, we progress from stage one to stage five. Medicines and therapies slow this progression, but we face the long-term prospect of experiencing them all. Stage one is the mildest. 
and is where most of us discover that we're ill. Stages 4 and 5 are too horrible to go into here. I have learned to slow my progression through the stages to such an extent that I simply cannot ever reach the later stages. In fact, I expect never to leave stage 1. My progression through the five stages is so very slow that I expect to live out my natural life into my 80s or 90s, and that won't be enough time for me to reach even stage 2. Because I'm attacking causes and symptoms, I would need to live to be over 100 to give the disease enough time to work through to even stage 2. And this is the key fact. An approach that slows the effects of the disease at its source and unwinds the symptoms that do occur so that they have little or no effect on us. Means that for years and years to come, I might still have a diagnosed illness, yet not notice a single thing about it. The progression of this disease can be delayed by decades. We can avoid deteriorating and suffering like we might have done, and instead lead healthy, happy lives. The 8 Ways to Get Out of Parkinson's Disease There are 8 main factors that contribute to this disease. To restore my health, I worked on every one of them. You can too. I installed small new habits over a series of weeks until I was hitting every known cause of my illness. Nothing escaped my attention, and everything got better. The changes came in days, improved over weeks, and have lasted for years. I won't go into all eight ways of beating the heck out of this illness here. Let me tell you briefly about three of the main ones. Inflammation Inflammation is a worldwide killer. It's a prime cause in a long list of unpleasant and deadly ailments. There are many diseases created from low-level, ongoing inflammation. Over 130 million Americans have conditions directly related to inflammation, and nearly a million die each year. The number is rising worldwide. What matters to us is that scientists know that inflammation is heavily implicated in the death of substantia nigra nerve cells. To arrest the progress of this dreadful illness, we must address that inflammation. Fortunately, it's not at all difficult to do. Simple changes undo inflammation incredibly quickly, which in turn halts the death of substantia nigra nerve cells. Environmental toxins, poisons. I knew nothing about environmental toxins until I started looking into them. Turns out they're horrifying. For a start, toxins, poisons, that get into the body, double the risk of degenerative brain disease. And we're talking about poisons from everyday life that directly and provably create extraordinary stress for the whole body, including the brain. Toxins are literally everywhere. Household furnishings, paints, children's toys, cleaning agents, plastics, water, the air, and in a whole range of places you'd never think of. Our bodies deal very well with a certain level of toxicity, but modern products and materials mean the amount of toxins coming into our bodies exceeds what our bodies can remove via its natural processes. So there's a toxic buildup, and eventually tissues and organs in the body start to break down. That breakdown leads to classic toxicity illnesses, and one of the worst of those classic illnesses is Parkinson's. The toxicity connection is researched and confirmed all over the world. But there's good news. We can remove toxins from around us, and it's not even slightly difficult to do. We don't have to live on a mountain or give up normal life. Instead, there are choices most of us didn't know existed, and those choices will transform brain health. Low moods and stress. This is one that many people think wouldn't apply to them. I thought that too. Unfortunately, this disease is known to lead to genuinely depressive episodes. Remember, Parkinson's is characterized by lowered dopamine, and lowered dopamine is an established cause of all sorts of mental health issues. So it's not at all surprising that people with this condition can end up very stressed and feeling very bad indeed. The really cruel part of feeling so low is that then people find it close to impossible to motivate themselves to take care of their health. And although natural methods for controlling and calming Parkinson's are straightforward, if a person feels so incredibly miserable they can't even get out of bed, then they simply can't take care of their health, which means they will not do the very things they need to do in order to be well again. It's the most vicious of vicious circles. And remember, health providers already know this. That's what I found hardest to come to terms with. In fact, inflammation and environmental toxins are considered to be the world's two most deadly health threats. They're the direct cause of dozens of illnesses and kill several million people worldwide every year. Their effects are in front of our eyes. For example, 
cases of Parkinson's have doubled over the last 25 years. The human body hasn't changed in 25 years, so it has caused such a drastic upsurge of brain degeneration. It's ever-rising cases of inflammation, environmental toxins, and struggles with low mood and negative feelings. And these aren't disputed findings, by the way. In the very best research laboratories and universities across the world, the effects of inflammation, everyday toxins, and reduced mental health on the body and brain are researched, measured, and understood. Their effects on many of us are bad. For some of us, they're devastating. Why does modern medicine know this but ignore it? Why don't we tackle the inflammation and toxins that are the causes of those nerve cells continually dying in the substantia nigra? My doctor told me it's cultural. Most patients, especially in Western countries, want a drug or a procedure for a problem. Something that's a one-off fix like an operation or an easy regular thing like a course of tablets. What they don't want to have to make is an effort to heal themselves. So pills it is. But most inflammatory diseases can be tackled more effectively by lifestyle changes than by drugs. Whole classes of deadly modern illnesses can be changed by a small number of simple targeted lifestyle tweaks. But our medics push meds because they know that, mostly, their patients won't make lifestyle changes. So they give their patients drugs, knowing that they'll at least take them. Frustratingly, the best solution, addressing lifestyle factors, isn't at all difficult. It's just that popping a pill is easier. This simple remedy changed my life. Simple lifestyle improvements transformed my entire life. It's done exactly the same for thousands of other very ordinary people who thought they'd suffer their illness for life. It requires a small initial effort, not much, but a little more than unscrewing the lid on a jar of chemicals. For the millions who see drugs as their only hope, there are thousands like me who know for an absolute fact that they're not, which is why we don't suffer those nasty symptoms anymore, while they still do. How I Treated My Own Brain Deterioration Everything I did to restore my own brain health, I learned from a natural health practitioner called Jody Knapp. I discovered Jody on a local health forum some years ago. She works with people using natural approaches to reverse illnesses which were caused by natural causes which is, in fact, almost every illness known to man. Her philosophy is simple. Disease always has a cause. If I have pain, a deterioration, or some painful or deadly affliction, there are reasons why I have it. It doesn't just happen. Understand those reasons, and we have ways of reversing what's gone wrong. Jody's incredible success rate at treating allegedly untreatable illness comes from her starting at the illness's first causes. Those causes are always natural causes. She tackles them and changes lives. Why Jody's Method Works Remember, standard drug remedies tackle the disease further along the chain, at the point where there's a dopamine shortage. Doctors simply don't address the reason that dopamine is in short supply in the first place. Jody does. She addresses the specific reasons why cells in the substantia nigra are dying off. Then she addresses low dopamine itself. Then she undoes the symptoms of the illness, the part of the disease that you and I experience. Jody Knapp can't teach her methods face-to-face -to, -face to everyone who needs them, so she created a written version of her approach. It's called the Parkinson's Protocol. And it's the Parkinson's Protocol that changed not only my present life, it changed my future life too. 12 Steps to Making It Happen Thankfully, Jody's program isn't a long list of don'ts. There's no calorie counting, strange potions, or weird rituals. Instead, it's a fairly short list of powerful, practical, easy-to-implement do's. Jody Knapp has broken her program into 12 small habits that you can introduce into your life in order to undo the causes and symptoms of brain degeneration. There's no revolution here. I made one simple change, and when I was sure I'd got it, I went on to the next one. Stuff so stupidly easy, I did wonder with a couple of them how they could possibly have any effect at all. But this is the thing. It was tiny bad habits that got me so ill in the first place. So it only requires tiny good ones to undo it all. No revolution required. I didn't throw my current lifestyle out of the window. I just tweaked what I was already doing. So that when everything new was in place, my life looked just like it always had done. I do something slightly differently now. But nobody can see what I've changed unless I explain it. It's that subtle. All I had to do was introduce the habits one at a time at a rate I felt comfortable with. 
I introduced one new habit every few days, which gave me time to ensure I had made it a part of my life. Each one directly acted on some aspect of my illness, either causes or symptoms. I swapped old habits that caused a progressively worsening brain state for new habits that support a progressively improving one. And so I stopped getting worse and started getting better. Not good as new, better than new. So many of the body functions that had started to deteriorate were made better than they'd been before I was ill. So when I started this program, I wasn't just clearing up symptoms associated with my diagnosed illness. I was also undoing the natural effects of being over 50 at the same time. Which meant I wasn't just tackling Parkinson's symptoms. I was tackling life symptoms. I ended up fitter and healthier than I was before I started getting ill. Even a completely healthy person can follow this program and improve their health dramatically. Doing this is triply more vital once a person has received a Parkinson's diagnosis. In truth, it's not magic at all. Of course, the kind of turnaround I experienced here does feel like magic. Who wouldn't feel like they've experienced something miraculous when an illness like this does an about turn? And everything I learned from Jody comes with sparkling scientific credentials. It's researched knowledge from scientific establishments all over the United States, Europe, and the world. None of this program is controversial. There aren't any scientists waiting to debunk any of this. Because collectively, this is their work. Jody simply turned it into a set of 12 habits that thousands of us have used to treat a nightmare illness. The only reason it's not mainstream, the only reason it's only thousands of people who benefit from this rather than millions, is because it involves some initial effort to take on these habits. Yet, once done, it's just so easy. And the reward? Health. Pure and simple. How about you? I know how scared I was when I got my diagnosis. Nobody can take such a blow calmly. The end game of this illness is physical disability and mental disability. It's helplessness that means you're forever reliant on someone else for every little detail of your day-to-day -day life. Yet, as I discovered, none of this is actually inevitable. What Jody's The Parkinson's Protocol powerfully showed me is that sufferers can have more than just hope. We can outrun this disease. We can hold it off for decades and live full, healthy lives in the meantime. Now is the time to start doing that. Get The Parkinson's Protocol today and feel the difference. Just click the link below this video. Repair and Restore It was simple, unhelpful habits that created the conditions for degeneration of our brain cells. It's simple adjustments to those habits that unravels the whole mess. Repair damage, restore health. You have lots of life ahead of you. You can choose the quality of the rest of that life right now. I swapped the certainty of a mind and body that would deteriorate before my eyes for the certainty of a body and mind that would get stronger before my eyes. In 12 straightforward steps, I turn my illness on its head. Years after succeeding with Joni Knapp's program, I still go for my checkups because, as my physician tells me, I can't claim to have gotten rid of the disease. But we both know what the results are going to show. We go through the motions because we have to. And I'm fine. He knows it. And I certainly know it. Get the same for yourself. And get it now. Start reclaiming your physical and mental health now. You know and I know. There's a simple truth when it comes to serious illnesses like Parkinson's. What is addressed can improve, but what's ignored always gets worse. And that's especially true with this condition because it's degenerative. Almost by definition, it absolutely will get worse over time if we fail to tackle it. Every day we don't act to improve our condition, we get a tiny bit more ill. The sooner you address this thing, the easier it is to have a noticeable and long-lasting effect on it. Don't wait around on this. You can have the Parkinson's protocol in your inbox in under three minutes. Just click the link below. There is such a thing as too late. Remember, this program works in three ways. One, it arrests the degeneration of brain cells in the substantia nigra. This is the underlying cause of Parkinson's. Two, it then addresses the lower dopamine levels that bring about Parkinson's symptoms. And three, it tackles the condition's effects directly, dramatically reducing them or ensuring that they don't come about in the first place. We must do point one, arresting the degeneration of brain cells quickly. Typically, at the point that symptoms are noticed, some 80% of the substantia nigra cells have already been lost. 80% is a very big number. The quicker we get to work to save the other 20%, the better. As yet, that degeneration cannot be reversed. 
So get to work on it today. Preserve existing healthy brain cells and make your recovery that much more certain. Do not let things get any worse. You still have time to make good, so do it now. The Parkinson's Protocol is guaranteed, and your copy is waiting. Click the link below.